Hey guys, my name is Jamie Young Wilson. I'm a freelance consultant through my company Onyx Reporting. Um, I, I've been thinking about this for a while and been meaning to do it, but today's the day. Today, we're going to talk you through marketing attribution and customer journey. Now, these are both two sides of the same coin, right? When we talk about analyzing our, our marketing spend, we're like, where should I put my dollars? How do I decide where to invest? Do I put money into Facebook? Do I put money into Instagram? How do I make this decision? Um, so to that end, we're going to talk about four different attribution models, and we're going to talk about customer journey. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the code for how I came up with these numbers. I'm going to walk you through the math in Excel. Um, and then in my next video, I'm actually going to walk you through the code. This was all done in my SQL. Now, those of you who are uh, mathematicians or who are data scientists, you know you can implement the Shapely value using Python. Um, but not every customer has a data science toolkit. So I wanted to show you how you could do this in ETL today, right now, no beta features, no um, premium features. But let's take a step back. What the heck is marketing attribution and why do I care? This is a real data set that came off of Kaggle. Um, the data science website. Um, and what it does is it says a cookie is a person, more or less, right? And that cookie follows you around. Every time I interact with a video, uh, they capture my cookie. And my journey says, hey, for this cookie, first they saw an Instagram video, then they saw an online display, then they saw another online display, then they saw an online display. And you know what? They didn't convert. They didn't buy anything. Do I have conversion? Here I have a conversion. Huh, right off the bat. This person, they saw a paid search, they immediately converted. They went out and bought that $50, $6.5 pair of shoes. Okay. This is the data set we have to work with. And in this data set, the question we want to answer is, hey, where do I invest my money? What channels are leading to the most conversions? There are three easy attribution methods that you could do with no advanced math, just a little bit of uh, trickery and wizardry. Um, first touch, last touch, and linear. So first touch says the first channel that somebody interacts with gets the credit for the conversion. First one. And last touch does exactly what it sounds like. The last channel I interacted with gets all of the credit for the conversion. I don't like either of these methods. And it's not just me I don't like. It's just, it's interesting. It's like winner takes all. The last touch or the first touch gets all the credit. If you're just pumping the internet full of Facebook ads, it's very likely that the first touch and last touch will be Facebook. But it's possible that these are really low quality ads. And the thing that's actually leading to conversion is a white paper. But because there's way fewer um, white paper interactions, it doesn't get the credit it deserves. Linear conversion is a little bit better insofar as it says, hey, every player, this is a team sport, every player gets the same amount of credit. Now, I don't know about you guys, I'm a big, I, like, I love video games. Uh, one of my favorite video games is Dota. It's a team game. It's a team of five against another team of five. But you know this game. Well, if you know this game, you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's always like two really good players, two average players, and the one really, really bad player. They're not really bad. They're almost detrimental to your team where you're like, God, I wish you would just leave. The shapely value of the methods, of the attribution methods here, the shapely value is the only one that is going to tell you, you know what? You're so bad, it would probably be best if you weren't there. Take a look. With Facebook, the performance or the shape of the graph is relatively similar. Sh Facebook always gets about the same or slightly better than paid search. Paid search is you know, kind of second best, although in my shapely value, paid search is the best. Online video kind of just does okay. It's plodding along. It's okay. Um, Instagram and online display, they don't get a lot of credit 
um, for conversions. But here's the thing. According to my shapely value, they're responsible for a loss. They're responsible for the loss of conversions. Or the loss of sales, whatever. Now, what's interesting is that if I take the sum of conversions for first touch and last touch, if I take the sum of linear conversion, which is um, one divided by all of the, the players in the game, if I take the sum of my, my average contribution per channel, they're all the same amount. And that's actually really powerful. That's a really cool um, truth about all of these different allocation methods. The question just is, is which one tells a more, in, more compelling analytic story? Okay, like I said, we're gonna get into the math of this um, very shortly. Before we do so, I wanna take an opportunity to talk about the other side of um, marketing analysis, which is customer journey. Customer journey just seeks to answer, hey, uh, how did you interact with my ads? And in what order did you interact with them? Now, curiously, a set does not ask, what order did you interact with my ads? It just says, did you interact with this channel or not? So if I consider Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram is a set. It is not ordered. I don't care which order you uh, participated or interacted with the ads. I had 2,247 conversions. Of those 2,247 conversions, they are spread across the series, first Facebook, then Instagram, 1,339, or Instagram, then Facebook, 908. Now you might say, ooh, Jay, the order that you interacted with my advertisements matters. Or you might say, you know what, I really don't care, it's the internet. Depending on your um, implementation, like your an analysis, like one may or may not be important. But consider, if you have five or six channels that you have ads over, six channels is a ton, a ton of different permutations or different orders that I can interact with your ads. I could go Facebook, then Instagram, then YouTube. I could YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, if I just do that, actually. So if I have three players, three channels I interacted with, that's six permutations. And the challenge here is instead of looking at 368 conversions, I now have 368 conversions spread across nine series, or sorry, six series. And that just really quickly cuts into the statistical significance um, of my data, right? Where it gets worse is if I start considering repeats. In both my series and my set, I ignore repeats. So like, even though my series is Facebook, Instagram, sorry, even though my set are Facebook, Instagram, and paid search, I could see two paid searches, one Facebook, one Instagram. I could see two paid searches, two Instagrams, five Facebooks, right? I could have 20 ads that I interacted with. And if people are having 20 interactions, it's a very low probability that you're going to see a lot of repeats of the exact same customer journey but it's still kind of interesting to know. It takes 20 ads before I finally convert someone. That's something to know. In a similar way, um, I could look at my journeys by just when did I change channels? So I could say, first I saw Facebook, then I saw seven Instagrams and one paid search. And that's the same as two Facebook, three Instagrams, one paid search. Again, my journey by channel just says, when did the channel change? Now, for the shapely math that we're going to be doing, we're exclusively going to be look at sets and series. So let's get into it. Let's talk about how I can tell if I need to get rid of a channel. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out all of the different games. You're going to figure out all of the different ways I can play the game or all of the different journeys people had. Well, they had a, a set of just Instagram, Facebook and Instagram, Facebook and YouTube, 
Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. YouTube, Instagram, paid search. These are set. The order that I saw the ad doesn't matter. It's just what were the channels that were part of this game. Now, when I want to calculate the um, marginal contribution, the amount that each player added to the game, I'm going to start by saying, okay, first off, what are all of my coalitions? What are all of the possible pairings or team compositions in a game uh, where my players are Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube? Well, if Facebook were to play on their own, Facebook would get seven points. That's good. When Instagram plays on their own, they get four points. When Facebook and Instagram play together, they just get seven points. Now that's interesting because I know if Facebook can play on their own can get seven, you would think Facebook plus Instagram should add something, but actually it stays the same. So Instagram, you're you're not bringing a lot of value here. Facebook and YouTube. Facebook is worth seven points. YouTube is worth six points. Seven plus six is thirteen. There's some synergy happening here because in this coalition they're worth more than the sum of their parts. Interesting. And then the grand coalition, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, is worth 19 points. Okay, these are sets. I don't care about the order that people played the game yet. Here, what I have to do is I have to say, hey, for that coalition, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, what are all the possible play orders? First Facebook goes, then Instagram goes, then YouTube goes. Facebook goes, then YouTube goes, then Instagram goes. And for each of these play orders, we're going to calculate the marginal contribution. How much did you add when you played your turn? Okay. Um, so let's consider the coalition or the play order, Facebook, then Instagram, then YouTube. When Facebook goes, they their coalition on their own, they earn seven points. When Facebook and Instagram goes, their coalition is worth seven points. But Facebook already brought seven points, which means that Instagram's marginal contribution, seven minus seven is zero. They didn't bring anything. Now, when YouTube goes, their coalition is worth 19 points. They will earn 19 points. The pot is already worth seven points. So 19 minus seven means that YouTube earned 12 points. YouTube brought 12 points to the coalition. Okay, let's consider a different play order. Facebook, then YouTube, then Instagram. Facebook on their own brings seven points to the pot. When YouTube goes after Facebook, well, first off, the coalition is worth 15 points. So if I take 15 minus the pot of 7, that means that YouTube had to have contributed 8 points. Then, when I look at Facebook, YouTube, then Instagram, the coalition is worth 19 points. The pot was 15 points, so YouTube, or sorry, Instagram must have added four points. You do this process of calculating the marginal contribution for all of the different play orders based off of what each coalition can do. Okay. And then you just calculate the average marginal contribution. So for Facebook, in game one, they brought seven. In game two, they brought seven. Seven plus seven is 14 divided by two is seven. Instagram, first game brought zero points. Second game, four points. Zero. Uh, <laughs> zero plus four divided by two is two. 12 plus eight divided by two is 10. Okay, so we're just looking at the average marginal contribution across the first two series. And we would do it for all of the series in this um, coalition. And so what do we get? We get the average marginal contribution of 7, 7, 3, 2, and 8, 2. And that makes sense 
YouTube was our banner player. We saw that YouTube brings a lot of value. Facebook brings some good value. Instagram, terrible. They're that player we might want to get rid of. Now, you, you might be wondering, well, Jay, under what circumstances would it be negative? Well, if I know that Facebook on their own can bring seven, and Instagram plus Facebook brings in four, right? Something happened between Facebook and Instagram to have a negative synergy. They should have like seven plus four is 11, but instead they're having four. So somebody in that partnership is bringing them down. And if uh, Instagram plus YouTube, also, if you can bring down YouTube from six down to one when you play, there's something really wrong with that, that partnership. And if, it off, if it's Instagram often enough, then it's just negative. They're bad for the game. And actually, when, our, when we uh, go to the data, right, that's what we end up seeing. Instagram and, and online display are, have such bad synergy, they tend to bring down our conversion rate. And what does that mean? Does it mean that they're bad? No, I mean, it just pro possibly means that, you know, you've just got really bad Instagram ads. Not only is it ineffective at converting people, but it's actually bad at converting. It causes people to dislike your product. Um, and again, that's the unique thing that Shapely brings to the table. All right, my name is Jay Wilson. This is the first part of a two-part series um, we're taking a look at marketing attribution and customer journey. Um, we're trying to understand what it is. And in my next video, we're going to show you how to calculate it. I hope you enjoyed. If you uh, did, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all the things, or contact me at jae at onyxreporting.com. Have a good one.